from Kirsch Tom It's the Tom Mikey Show. Shut your goddamn mouth. I'm trying to listen to Tom Mikey. Bitch. And now, and now, here he is. Tom Mikey. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Mikey Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. You may recall we, uh, <laughs> as many of you were not tuned in, apparently. You may recall we uh, read a posting from Craigslist on the air along with uh, a particularly well-written response. Now, what you may not be aware of is that, um, for those of you who did hear the show, this has now been uh, big news. It's appeared in the New York Times, the uh, CBS Early Show. Of course, that's like being in the Witness Protection Program, but uh, they did a story about it. It's been a big, big deal. Hundreds and hundreds, if not over a thousand of you, sent me a copy of this posting. Uh, Days after we did the show. I'm still getting them. And even though I've come on the air and said, hey, guys, uh, we did this as a show already. People are continuing to send it in. I mean, it's touched a nerve. Well, now a news story in the New York Times about this post from Craigslist. And uh, it's a continuation of a trend I've been talking to about the New York Times with its arrogant statement above the masthead on the front page of the newspaper. It says, all the news that's fit to print. The New York Times found out, like so many American newspapers, that circulation is beginning to evaporate. Apparently, the New York Times wasn't very good at deciding what was fit to print. So they've gone to a more tried and true source, the Tom Likas show, to find news that's fit to print. You know, a going concern. So now instead of writing about the Pentagon Papers or Iraq or... Afghanistan, or Barack Obama, or MoveOn.org. Now they're writing about stuff that we would talk about in the Tom Likas show. And uh, this from the New York Times. Last month on Craigslist.com, someone who described herself as, quote, a spectacularly beautiful 25-year-old placed a personal ad seeking a husband who made at least 500000 a year because, quote, $250,000 won't get me to Central Park West. As her post hit the blogs, it received a scathing response from a man who said he fit her description and told her that her proposition was a bad business deal in economic terms. He said, you are a depreciating asset and I am an earning asset because, quote, your looks will fade and my money will likely continue into perpetuity. By the way, he was right, right, right. Last week, this exchange spilled over into the email world where the item turned into a popular one to send to friends as a joke. The difference between this and other outrageous share mail messages, however, was that instead of remaining anonymous, its ostensible author signed his name and the company where he worked, 
which happened to be the investment banking division of J.P. Morgan Chase. That's where I'm putting my money from now on. Tell you what. They really have an understanding of economics over there. This detail, which may have provoked nearly as much mirth as the contents of the exchange, made the correspondence either more or less credible. Would someone with a big job at a prestigious company really have linked his name to a message that read in part, You're 25 now and will likely stay pretty hot for the next five years, but less so each year. Then the fade begins in earnest. By 35, stick a fork in you. That is classic writing. Pithy beyond words. The man who is widely credited with writing the response did not respond to a voice message from the New York Times. But the media relations department at J.P. Morgan Chase confirmed that he worked there and said that he was not the author. Rather, a company spokesman said he had forwarded the email message to friends... And the signature setting on his email accompanied the response when it wound up on blogs. Good thinking there, Ace. That's good. <laughs> and I was just about to move my money to J.P. Morgan. By this account, the employee was just an accidental sexist. New York Times calls him a sexist. The latest object lesson in the dangers of an email getting into the wrong hands. The Wall Street Journal, I'm sorry, the Wall Street equivalent of a Pittsburgh Steelers coach who passed along an email message with a sex video to the National Football League commissioner, among others. Did a Pittsburgh Steelers coach do that? Must have been when I was out of the country. I heard about that. Why am I not on that distribution list? Will... Schwalbe, author of Send, The Essential Guide to Email for Office and Home, and he just has that name that sounds like Poindexter, doesn't it? Will Schwalbe? Uh, call the ID department, get uh, Will Schwalbe on the phone. Got a problem here with my, uh, my Windows Vista. Get him down here. He said, your workplace computer, by the way, these these are... These are very carefully chosen words. He says, your workplace computer does not exist as a tool for forwarding jokey things. As for the legitimacy of the original posting by the husband seeker, a spokeswoman for Craigslist wrote in an email message that, quote, it does look as if the post was made sincerely. A message sent to the Craigslist mailbox seeking comment yielded no response. That woman is probably hiding under her bed crying. <laughs> Craigslist declined to say how many people responded to the personal ad, which asked, among other things, for names of bars, restaurants, and gyms where rich single men hung out. And so far, the identity of the responder remains a mystery, too. John Carney, editor of Deal Breaker, a Wall Street gossip site that posted the exchange on Wednesday, said, I wish we wrote it because I think it's great. Mr. Carney said that he had received the zinger in an email message from someone other than the author, and his source did not know who wrote it. The response never appeared on Craigslist itself. On Thursday, Howard Lindzen posted it to his blog. After a commenter asked who wrote it, Mr. Lindzen responded, Me! But then said in a telephone interview that he had been kidding. The traffic the posting drew was serious, though. Mr. Lindzen usually gets about 3,000 daily visitors. But popularity rating sites dig.com and reddit.com linked to the item, drawing more than 100,000 visitors and crashing his server. <laughs> Brett Michael Dykes. <laughs> no, the guy from Poison did not send up a business in, North, in West Hollywood. That's no. Brett Michael Dykes. That's three names. A blogger notorious for fake listings on Craigslist 
said he had received about 40 email messages accusing him of posting the husband-seeking personal ad. But he said he had not written it, and he was stumped about its provenance. Look it up. I probably read it five or six times, and I go back and forth, Mr. Dyke said. Sadly, he said, I think it may be real. In New York City, I've met that type of girl. <laughs> By now, Mr. Dyke said, a blogger would have taken credit for the listing if it were a hoax. But, quote, who would want to step from the shadows and say, I'm the gold digger? <laughs> That's true. And Mr. Carney said he was not holding his breath that the Wall Street type would step forward. He said, in the age of ultra-sensitivity to sexual harassment, people might think that this guy's response about women being depreciating assets is not exactly how they want their firm to be perceived by the public. Well, man, that may very well be true. But you've got to admit, women are depreciating assets. I mean, finally, it's been said in a forum other than the Tom Likas show, where probably millions of people have heard this now. Millions of people. I have said all along, men are like stocks going up and women are like stocks going down. Okay? As time goes on, we become more valuable. Like if you want a blue chip stock... You know, if you bought a, a stock like Procter & Gamble over the years or McDonald's or, you know, one of these big blue chippers, over time, if you look at a graph, that stock just keeps going up and up. Little plateaus once in a while, but it continues upward. Meanwhile, with time, women are like your basic 1990s tech stock. Oh, yeah, at one time they were just sizzling. And then at some point, they fall off a cliff, and they stay there. Now, now, finally, somebody has said the same thing I'm saying. Is it any less true today? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. One easy way to tell what you look like is to ask how much money your husband makes. If your husband makes a million dollars a year, I want to see you naked. If your husband makes $35,000 a year, don't even bother showing it to me. I don't want to see. If you make twice the money your husband makes, you're hideous. Bottom line. The Tom Likas Show. Hi, I'm Art Bernstein with a message for all kids under the age of 18. Hey, kids under the age of 18, you want beer and cigarettes? Of course you do. Then come to Art Bernstein's Beer and Cigarettes for Kids. It's the only place in town ballsy enough to admit that kids actually love beer and cigarettes, especially under the age of 18. At Art Bernstein's Beer and Cigarettes for Kids, that's all we carry, beer and cigarettes. And that's all we serve, kids under the age of 18, preferably double-digit ages, since young kids have a nasty habit of setting themselves on fire every time they try to light up a freaking smoke. Come on, kids under the age of 18. Don't waste time and valuable kid energy hiding in an alley waiting for some drunk to wander by so you can ask him to buy your brews or smokes. You're never going to see that money again. Then what are you going to do? Call the cops on the drunk? Right. Instead, come to Art Bernstein's Beer and Cigarettes for Kids, you dummy, where we give kids like you under the age of 18 the respect and the beer and cigarettes that you actually deserve. Bring your mother's stolen pocketbook to Art Bernstein's Beer and Cigarettes for Kids. Just look for the giant neon smoking baby. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. <laughs> and we're talking about the Craigslist posting. The woman who was looking to meet men who make over half a million dollars a year because a quarter million is not going to get her to Central Park West. And we did a show about this, uh, but a lot of people are still flooding us uh, with copies of the posting. And not only that, we now see a story about it, and of all places, the New York Times. And there's apparently this whole controversy about uh, the response where the guy called the woman a depreciating asset. But isn't that true? 
don't you want to get a woman when she's freshly baked out of the oven? You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, when she turns 18, she's legal. That's when you want to get her. You'll want to get her when she's 18, 19, 20. You do not want to be getting her when she's, you know, the age of, uh, well, put it this way, 35. Let's just say 35. If you have money, why would you want to spend that kind of money on somebody who's 35 and above? Why would you want to do it? You can afford better. If you can afford a place on Central Park West, that's a panty remover, baby. Are you kidding me? Why would you want to buy a, a depreciating asset? The guy was absolutely right. The New York Times called this guy a sexist. I don't think he's a sexist. He's honest. He has told the truth. Men may not get better looking as we get older, although some people say we do. But one thing is for sure. Most men become more valuable as we get older. We make our peak income when we get into our 40s, 50s, and sometimes early 60s. We've got savings. We've got real estate. We've got other assets. We've got stocks. We've got bonds. We've got mutual funds. Oh, we've got experience. I'm telling you what, it's not living like it's not like living with that guy who hands out the uh, free uh, Quiznos coupons. I'll tell you that. It's not like living with the guy who dresses like a Subway sandwich and waves you into the parking lot. You know the guy I'm talking about. It's not like your boyfriend, the barista. He has to hope that some moron will tip him at Starbucks. I mean, uh, men become more valuable as we get older and women become less valuable. It's absolutely true. And there should be no controversy, and I can't believe the New York Times says that's sexist. There's nothing sexist about it. It's a fact. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. It's Christopher on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello. Hey, I want to say, first of all, that you're a great broadcaster. You do a great job every day. Thank you. Um, I had a question for you. Uh, I'm 29, and my girlfriend is 22. And I wanted to know what you thought about having a girlfriend at that age, because you say no serious relationship before 25. I that, I think you shouldn't have a girlfriend who's 22. Um, you could certainly, um, in my view, have sex with someone who's 22, yes. But, you know, I, I kind of wanted to have that someone, you know, that I could bring to Thanksgiving or someone I can bring to Christmas where, you know, it's not just a booty call. It's not just someone I'm having sex with. Yeah, but the problem with, with doing that is that then she's going to expect you to marry her. Well, you know, she's at a point where she's not expecting marriage. Or anything. She's going to college now. She's not expecting that for years and years. Well, but she hasn't gone with you to the parents' house yet. She hasn't been with you on those holidays yet. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think yeah. that you're going to run into a problem if you start bringing her home. She's going to start feeling an attachment to your family. Mm -hmm. You don't want that now. Um, but see, I, I don't. I don't mind as much as you know. Since you know, I, I only plan to be with her for like another what three, four years till she hits expiration date. Does she know that? Um, well, you know that hasn't been discussed. All right. And what about the birth control situation? Um, she's yeah, she's on birth control. You're sure. I'm sure she takes it every day. Uh huh. And I know, I know you say, you know, is that, you know, but we've also had the discussion if she was to get pregnant, she would get an abortion. I would use a condom anyway. <laughs> I, I know you would say that, Tom. And I know you don't use one. <laughs> no, I don't. That's not smart. I know, I know. And then, you know, but I know in in three or four years, I'm not going to be calling you up and like Tom. I should have listened to you. I'm try I just want to get your opinion because you're the professor and you know the most about. I it. just don't believe in making them your girlfriend that young because I do believe uh, that they are immature. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, by the way, I also believe that they will cheat on you because uh, one day the high school uh, sweetheart comes to town or the college boyfriend uh, calls from a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, women just go off and do those things. They don't wait for your approval. Yeah, that's true. Well, so uh, I don't want you to be disappointed because I'm telling Does she have a MySpace page? Uh, yes, she does. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> why would your girlfriend need a MySpace page? Um, you, you know, I, this is one of the things that I disagree with you on the fact that people who are younger use MySpace as more of a social networking. What, what does social networking mean? It means hooking up. It does to an extent, but, you know, sometimes, that you know, it's just so that you can stay in contact. Yeah, I know. But they, what about a telephone?
awful. This is stupid. It is to sell yourself to people who haven't met you before. But she has her she has a profile that's private, and so do I. So why does she need the page? Well, uh, you know, a lot of her friends are on on this. A lot of my friends are on this. You know, I'm not willing to give up my MySpace because you want to hook up. <laughs> Maybe in years down the line, so I still have those contacts. It's the same <laughs> as keeping a phone number. <laughs> Just don't be surprised if what happens to people will happen to you. Okay. No, that makes sense. Well, I, I, I thank you very much, Tom. And uh, can you take me out Michael Vick style? Michael Vick style? Well, of course. I, no one's asked for Michael Vick style. There we go. That was Michael Vick applying the cattle prod, by the way. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jay on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Great. So here's my question. I've been married five years. I uh, was happily married for three of them. I had a, a child two years ago, and, and life changed ever since, uh, both working full-time. Uh, wondering uh, what you think I should do. We're just not happy in our marriage right now. Well, I warned you about doing that. You did. But you went ahead and got married anyway. I did. We, uh, we, uh, we've we we known each other for a long time. Everything w was great and, until we had our daughter. Do you think that the uh, dual working household uh, uh, works? Um, generally, from what I've seen, uh, it doesn't work for kids or parents. And so do you think I cut bait? Do you think I stick it out a little longer? Well, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, is your wife refusing to give it up? Is that what a uh, big part of the problem is? That is part of the problem, yes. And uh, when you tell her you you need sex, what does she tell you? Uh, you know, it has to be the right situation, the right time, the romance, all the, you know, everything that... Oh, everything. when they ask for romance, it's like demanding uh, a massage, okay? Uh, they're just trying to put you off. Exactly. So, I mean... I'll have sex with you, but first I want flowers. I want you to come out with rose petals. I want you to light the fire. Stop it. What is this? Uh, is this like Survivor? I have to do all these chores, all these tasks? until exactly I, I right. Oh, uh, come on. So, so you think I just lay it out? This is what I need. This is how I need it to be? Yes. Uh, yes. By the way, many women are just testing you anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, by the question. way, did you have to do all those things? Did you have to jump through all those hoops when she met you? No, it was a lot different than that. I mean, everything was fine. Honestly, the day we had our child is the day that things changed. Right. So when she says, uh, you're going to have to give me romance, she doesn't want to have sex with you. That's what she's telling you. <laughs> so not a good situation for me, then, is what you're saying. No. She used to want to have sex with you. Now she got what she really wants, which is your sperm. Yeah, I mean, and and she wants me to... I, I consider myself a good father. I put, I put a lot of time in. I, I work full time. I make a decent living or, or more than a decent living. And how often do you have to get up and take care of the baby at 3 a.m.? Well, that that was a big deal because we, we would fight over that a lot. We we both worked full time. We'd take turns. But, you know, when you get waking up in the middle of the night, you're just not in a good mood. And you say things that you don't, you know, don't necessarily mean you're just on the seat. You're, you're just on edge. I have always said that the traditional roles work best. Yeah. And I say this as somebody who tried to do it the opposite way. I mean, at one time in my life, I really thought I was a feminist. And at one time in my life, I uh, I tried to do half of everything. And uh, I tried to be, uh, uh, you know, a good person. And if she didn't want to have sex for three weeks, I would tolerate it. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> well, uh, I, I appreciate the advice. I didn't think you were, you know, I listened, listened to you for a number of years. So I figured you'd be telling me stuff that I've, I've heard you say time and time again. But it, it, it helps to at least touch base with you and, and uh, hear it directly from you. Well, thank you, Jay. I appreciate that. You take me out with a bong hit? Here you go. One eight hundred. Well, one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. That's our telephone number. Lucy, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom. Hi. Hi. 
I'm calling because I don't agree with your comment about the, the, how women lose their value after a certain age. The, the guy uh, who responded to the Craigslist posting said women are a depreciating asset, and I agree with him. <laughs> well, I'm, I, I know what I tell you, my age, you're going to croak over. You're going to think, I'm, oh, hag, I'm 46, but I'm hot. What do you mean by hot? Well, I'm Cuban. I have beautiful skin. I have a, 30, a 36C. I'm 5'4". Okay, I'm a little short. Yeah, and you're Cuban and 46. May I ask? I was married to a Cuban and I lived in Miami. Do you have a 36C butt also? I have a small butt. You have a small butt? I don't have a big ass like the real Cubans. How what? much are you? You're not a real, you're like, hey, what, half Cuban or something. You can't. You can't be Cuban and not look like no, the Michelin Man at 46. You can't. I don't know why, but no, I was actually born in Cuba. But uh, you were married to a Cuban. Then you know that we're hot. Well, dear, I know that you're hot when you're young, but I also know that uh, when you're 35, you start looking like your mother. Oh, well, my mother was beautiful. She was 105. How much do you weigh? 120. How tall are you? 5'4". It's up there. And believe me, my boobs are natural and they do not sag, okay? Well, do they, hopefully they weigh about 30 pounds. <laughs> At that height. You are incorregible. <laughs> I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Anyways, I just wanted to say that because I think it's funny. I listen to you most of the time, and I think you're hilarious. Well, thank you, Lucy. And you do have a point in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like all the women call, but I'm not that way. <laughs> it's the 46-year-old Cuba with a small butt, everybody. She's calling in right now. Oh, no. <laughs> She's the one uh, right here. I, I'm going to email a picture of me. You're not going to believe it. You know, I have 26-year-old guys trying to pick up on me all the time. Yeah, but they, they're always trying to pick up on cougars and milfs and stuff, you know, because it's, uh, you know, easy pickings. Oh, God. I did not have desperate written on my face, okay? I, I work out every day. Only written on your a butt. Range of men. And by the way, you know what? I dated a guy in his 50s. And he has absolutely silcho. He was making $150,000 a year, but his ex-wife and his two kids took it all. So all of you guys are not a precious commodity. Oh, I agree with you. I, I, By the way, I wouldn't want a guy with that kind of baggage. I wouldn't want him either. <laughs> well, see, I wasn't after his money, Tom. Not all of us are gold diggers, you know. <laughs> uh, oh, I saw you at the Orange County Auto Show, okay? Oh. You look hungover. Hung over? <laughs> you did. You're like wearing dark shades. And well, I do that all the time, dear. You've never seen me in public. I wear dark sh I'm wear. i wearing dark shades now. Oh, okay. See, that's the first time I've ever seen you. I actually went to see you. Oh. But it was it was funny because there was too much testosterone around. You know, all those guys with the gals. The girls were beautiful. But um, anyways, it was funny. But yeah. <laughs> anyways, I just want to let you know. And, uh, keep up the good work. I do love you. Why? Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> Lucy, the 46-year-old Cuban with a small butt. She's the one. There's not a lot of those out there. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's John on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. So, I, you know, I really don't have much of a comment except for that the Times is calling this guy a, a sexist. Yes. So what's to say that the lady's not a sexist for what she thinks to do just because she's a hot woman? I mean, come on. Well, that's true. I mean, uh, isn't it sexist to expect that a man is going to buy you everything and uh, take you to Central Park West? You know, so that you know, it's it's crazy that they just call in one person the kettle black when they really both are. If, if they're going to call anybody sexist, I, I think they were fighting fire with fire in that uh, in that exchange. So thanks a lot, Tom. You do great service for everybody, and take me out any style you want. Well, I'll take you out old school. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred. In order, I scream, it's 3 o'clock, i got to turn Tom Likas on, and all my girlfriends think I'm crazy. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the 
Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Jordan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on, uh, you know, the topic, women are depreciating value. I'm a business owner, and absolutely. I mean, the only point a woman has in the workforce is to make a guy's, you know, life work easier. Well, I agree with that. I mean, uh, I certainly, uh, you know, I mean, there, there are certainly aggressive women who want to bust their ass and work their way to the top, and I think that's fantastic. And they make great booty calls, but you wouldn't want to live with them or anything. Exactly. No, I mean, I'm a, a bar owner, a bikini bar owner over in Orange County. And, uh, you know, after uh, so long of being there, you have to fire him because, you know, the customers get stale out of stale of them. So you got to bring a new face in. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, great talking to you, Tom. Thanks a lot. I'm sure it was. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing today? Doing great. You are a god, my friend. I swear, I was a Likas 101 student even before I even started listening to you. I love that. Yeah. I, you know, I went through all that stupid dating stuff in college and... I was on the same mind frame as you were before I even started listening to you, is that women are just, you know, relationships, they're too much work there. You need to be concentrating on your life, on business. And now, since I've been following Like Us 101, things are great. I have a great job. I'm concentrating on that, moving up in the world. And I really wanted to comment on this story. I mean, people, the times is just pissed because this guy called this woman out i mean she was and he out. told the truth women are depreciating assets yes i mean everyone says oh i'm a 46 year old woman and i'm hot like that cuban woman who was on early later yeah but in 10 years you'll be a 56 year old woman and very 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 few men go Ooh, a 46 year a 56 year old hot girl All right, right. That, grandma. Uh, that, and by the way if you've got money why would you want to look at that naked Exactly. I'm fact of nature. Boobs fag. Yes. I'm allowed to say that, right? Yes. Uh, okay, good. Yeah, and any woman who tries to convince herself otherwise is just, it's just hopeless romanticism is what it is. It is a very rare breast that does not end up pointing south at some point in time. Yeah, and those that don't, you have to pay a couple grand to get them to not. Or, no, no, out. there's one other way. If they've got that natural underwire, which is what I call uh -huh. rolls of fat that hold them up. <laughs> That'll do it, too. Absolutely. Uh, well, it was great talking to you, Tom. Absolutely love the show. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep this world moving. I'm, I'm working on that. Take me out tribal style. African tribal style. Here you go, Chris. Bye, 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 it's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Stephen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Stephen. First time, long time. I had to call in and tell you this story about something that happened to me the other night. Yes, I had this girl over my house a little bit after 9 o'clock, had some drinks in me. She comes over. We're hooking up. We're doing our thing. I get her shirt off. I get her bra off. Everything's going good. And then she tells me I'm celibate. Ha! Can you believe that? Who uses that term nowadays, Tom? Who uses that term? Uh, uh, people who are religious. Oh, this is not a religious girl. This is a daddy's princess. So what? She's uh, is she saying she's celibate or she's not giving it away? Well, I know for a fact that she's not a virgin. That that much I can guarantee. But she was just, I guess, telling me at the time she's just not having sex. But that gets me to wondering, what are you doing at my house at 10 p.m. drinking beer with me in my room? Right. So did you kick her out? I did. I told her. I said, I'm off to bed. I am off to bed, and it is definitely going to be the last time. I have that over at my house. And how did she react to that? Yeah, she, you know, she seemed a little bit bitter. She actually, uh, she ended up caught. Uh, she texted me the next day. 
she tried to do that whole like like friendly text i'm still kind of interested uh i just blew her off i pretty much i erased her number from my cell phone it is time for men to stand up and boycott any woman who says that uh, she doesn't have sex i don't usually do this i'm not putting out freak what what are we talking to you for Exactly, Thomas. This is exactly what I'm saying. I said, what are you doing at my house late at night? Did I, she I, tell you what she was doing there? Well, it, you know, I, I was, I was, I didn't come right out and say that, but I was kind of insinuating, like, what are you doing here then? But it was so, such a, after I found out that it wasn't going to happen, I mean, I pretty much just shut down too. She killed the whole thing. She killed it all. Wow. Unbelievable, huh, Tom? Uh, well, believable because I've heard of it before. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Oh, hi, John. How are you doing? Uh, well, uh, no, yeah, you're I'm John. Tom. I'm not yeah, John. I'm oh, sure. I was just calling in because I heard you talking earlier about kind of like young guys who don't really have that much going for them like, and trying to get girls and like versus old guys who have a lot of money. But I guess the thing about me is I'm a younger guy. I have a lot of money, and I live in the Hollywood Hills area. Go out to clubs and bars like... Girls of all ages, like, pretty much throw themselves at me all the time. And I take, like, I give with a lot of girls. But, like, what's really a good age for a guy like me to get into a relationship? Well, put it this way. Um, do you ever need to be in a relationship? That, I was going to ask you, like, is there really any point to it? Well, that's my point to you. I mean, you have to tell me you need it. And if you can't say that, then there there is no requirement. You know, the days of Ozzy and Harriet are over. The days when you automatically had to, uh, you know, uh, go steady with a girl and then get engaged and then get married. Those days are done. You don't have to do that anymore. You say just keep playing around, have fun. Have yeah. fun as long as you want. Life is short. All right, I love your advice. Thank you, Tom. Maybe I live in the Hollywood Hills, too, and I've got money, too. Yeah. I'm probably your neighbor. <laughs> probably. And I'm telling you, I'm loving it. I do not need anybody living in my house. Uh, that's great. Because under California law, it's very hard to get the. It's like the, your house becomes like the Roach Motel. Roaches check in, but they don't check out. Yeah, I mean, it definitely makes it a lot easier when you bring a girl back in that area. Well, of course, but the trick is you don't want them staying at your place. You don't want them leaving stuff behind. You don't want them hanging clothes or pantyhose in your shower. You don't want them leaving toothbrushes or or jewelry, little piece of jewelry that they like the little post that goes behind a, the pierced earring or whatever. You want that stuff out, out, out. Uh, what do you do? Like, feel like when, when, when girls start leaving, like all this like different stuff at your house. Or when they like, ask me later uh, where their things went, I I don't, I don't know. Maid must have t must have thrown it out. I don't know. Okay, so I don't keep stuff around. No. Gotcha. Or like, or say if she does leave something, just say, "Oh, you forgot this. Come pick it up." Or like, no, 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 because it, that's why she left it there. Okay. So she can go back. Don't give her what she wants. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. They do that on purpose. They're manipulating you. It's a, it's a good point. So um, you you turn the tables on them. I don't know where your earrings went. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see it. any earrings. Maybe you left them at someone else's house. Yeah. I actually said that to a woman, and she just went into a, a she just went ballistic. <laughs> what are you saying? I'm a slut. I left them at somebody else's. Yeah, well, you know. It's a funny story. It's not like it made me wait. <laughs> <laughs> you probably left them somewhere else. That's fine. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, John. Thank you. Appreciate the call. There goes John. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here comes Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. I just need to bring up my girlfriend on the phone. I need to get over. She's a gold digger. Shut up. Uh-huh. Can I do that right now? Of course. All right. Can I, can I give you the number so we can do it on the air? You want to do it on the air? It'd be easy to play, you know. Might as well. All right. Well, we're at the end of the hour, so we'll take the phone number, and then we'll see if we can reach her. Dean's going to do the uh, reconnaissance right now. Rebecca on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Great. 
Good. I have a question slash I need your opinion and help. A question slash I need your opinion and help. I've been listening to you for about a year now, and I have recently just got my first boyfriend, and we've been together for almost a year. He actually got me into you, and I am still a virgin. So he's broken at least two of my rules right there. Yes. Boyfriend and virgin. Don't have him. Don't have a boyfriend. My question is, I probably sound like the most naive and idiotic person ever. Is he getting it from someone else? Probably, yes. And he's 21 years old. He should be. I agree. Not... So you want to have a boyfriend who gets it somewhere else? Are you crazy? The Tom Likas Show.